In this King's Bench case, Mrs Curtis took a wedding dress to be dry cleaned at the Chemical Cleaning and Dyeing Company. The attendant gave Mrs Curtis a document headed Receipt, which she was asked to sign. She asked why she needed to sign it. The attendant told her that the receipt listed exclusions to the dry cleaner's liability. Mrs Curtis asked about those and the attendant told her that the dry cleaners would not accept liability for risk to beads and sequins on the wedding dress. Mrs Curtis decided to risk it and she signed the receipt. Well, when she returned to get the dress, it seems the beads and sequins were okay, but there was a stain on the dress. She took action for damages. The dry cleaners produced the receipt which said, this or these articles is accepted on condition that the company is not liable for any damage howsoever arising or delay. The company said that consequently any liability they might have was excluded. You can see though that this clause excluded far more liability than the beads and sequins which Mrs Curtis had been told about. The King's Bench found that the dry cleaners could not rely on the exclusion clause for two reasons. Lord Denning reminded the court of the decision, Ollie and Marlborough Court, in which the court made it clear that to rely on an exclusion clause, you must fairly bring it to the attention of the other side. He said, if a person wishes to exempt himself from a liability which the common law imposes on him, he can only do it by an express stipulation brought home to the party affected and assented to by him as part of the contract. All three judges, though, found that the exclusion clause could not be relied upon, because of the misrepresentation by the attendant as to the nature and effect of the exclusion. They all accepted that the attendant's misrepresentation was entirely innocent, but it was still misleading. Lord Denning said, In my opinion, any behaviour by words or conduct is sufficient to be a misrepresentation if it is such as to mislead the other party about the existence or extent of the exemption. This case then is both a great example of innocent misrepresentation and an authority that you can't rely on an exclusion clause if the nature of that clause has been misrepresented. Mm -hmm.